Hi, my name is Maria Jesus and I'm a grad student here at California Botanic Garden. I'm up here in the Native Designs Garden up on the Mesa where several different lupin species are starting to bloom. Lupins have palmately compound leaves. That means each leaflet right here, this is one leaflet, arises out of the same point to form a leaf that's reminiscent of the shape of a palm of a hand. Lupin petals are typical of a major group within the pea family. This large upper petal is called a banner. These two petals to the side are the wings. And below, these two fused petals are the keel, which are usually hidden within the wings. As you might expect from plants in the pea family, lupin roots look an awful lot like peas that you would buy in the grocery store or maybe even grow in your own garden. If you want to tell lupin species apart, remember that it's often important to notice small characters, like whether there are teeny tiny hairs on the banner or the edge of the keel. Don't get tripped up by looking at things like flower color because that can sometimes lead you astray. For instance, flowers of the chip lupin can be white, yellow, pink, or purple. It's no surprise that these are a popular garden option for native plant enthusiasts. There are over 75 species of lupin in California, and they can be found from coastal environments to high alpine mountaintops. Many species of lupin are well adapted to disturbed habitats. In California, the stinging lupin often shows up in great numbers after fire. And yes, this awesome lupin species really does have stinging hairs. Further north in Washington state, the Pacific lupin, a common species native to Western North America, played a key role in bringing life back to Mount St. Helens after the 1980 eruption destroyed everything in its path. Two years after the blast, scientists noticed a single lupin plant growing in the nutrient-poor volcanic rock and ash. How did it do that? Well, it could be because lupin roots form a special relationship with bacteria beneath the soil, which allow them to transform nitrogen, an important plant nutrient, into a usable form. Since lupins are so well suited to disturbed habitats, it's no surprise that some lupin species can actually become quite invasive. So fig leaf lupin, which is a California native plant, was actually introduced to many other parts of the world due to its beauty, and it's quite easy to grow. Unfortunately, it's escaped into the wild and has become an invasive plant problem in all sorts of places, everywhere from the eastern US to New Zealand and now even Iceland. Even though these invasive lupin plants put on quite a wildflower show, one way they cause harm is by displacing native plant species and all the pollinators and animals that depend on them. That's one of the reasons why California Botanic Garden is so rich in insects, birds, and mammals. We have an abundance of native plants that support biodiversity. So next time you're here, take a look and see how many different species of lupin you can find. And look closely to see how many different pollinators you see visiting the flowers. If you're interested in growing your own, check out the wildflower varieties we have available at our Grow Native Nursery. That's all and happy Native Plant Month!